friends, it's Sarah from Sunset Bow uh, doing another unboxing today. So this is a deck that I actually backed quite a while ago on Kickstarter. It's the Shadow Light Tarot. Um, and it's a deck that I kind of backed a little bit on the spur of the moment. You know, the artwork is really quite uh, amazing when you look at it online. Um, and, you know, it was one of those things where the kind of early bird Kickstarter pricing for the deck wasn't actually super expensive, so I sort of backed it on a whim, and, uh, you know, I'm honestly not sure how I'm going to respond to it in person, but I think the artwork is really quite incredible, and, you know, the way it ended up working out, um, the sort of rewards that were come up with for even just the standard deck for this particular Kickstarter are pretty awesome. Um, you know, it comes with a nice box, it comes with a mini deck, like, there's you know quite a bit of extra sort of bells and whistles that ended up coming with even just the sort of standard reward level for this deck on the Kickstarter um, so I'm really eager to take a look at it so again um, this is a, a deck called the Shadow Light Tarot um, the, the Kickstarters uh, the, the artists sort of um, you know store name is called Waking Canvas and so here is the deck and here's the mini deck you know not super packaged like you know with a lot of padding or anything like that but I think that's probably fine you know it does come with a at least a plastic bag around the box here so that it doesn't get scratched um, and then the mini deck um, comes there well it's it's in this little bag but I think the bag is actually made to fit the big deck or something like that I'm not entire I'm not entirely sure how it's gonna work but um, but anyway so it, it does come with a mini version of the deck which is similar artwork but you know slightly scaled down so we'll take a look at that in just a second um, but I'm gonna just go ahead and open this up so um, you know it's a really nice magnetic box um, the Kickstarter ended up being a little bit delayed because the first boxes that came in weren't um, weren't as nice as the creator was expecting and um, what he did was he you know sent out a, uh, a a survey to all of the backers saying you know would you like the deck now with the box that's not quite as sturdy as I was expecting or would you like to wait and get a nicer box that I'm having the boxes redone and um, the backers voted to wait for the nicer box and I also did because I, I thought that was fine you know I can I can wait a little longer for a deck um, in order to get you know sort of the packaging the way the creator intended but so it's a very nice magnetic box um, and it says Shadow Let Tarot is an 88 card deck uh, hand illustrated deck acting as a modern reinvention of the tarot explore the 22 paths and elemental realms never before seen through infinite panoramic worlds every detail creating a living breathing realm embedded with esoteric symbolism and magic discover the true balance existing between the shadow casted by the light um, and so the the interesting thing about these cards is that um, they do create um, you know Full panoramas, sort of like how the um, the suits in the Prisma Visions, you know, all the cards connect together if you lay them out side by side to create a sort of full panorama. But the pan panoramas in this are infinite, as in the the ace connects to, back to the king so you can make like a full circle and the majors in this are panoramic too the majors in uh the prisma visions are not panoramic just the individual suits but all the suits and the majors in this have that sort of panorama concept to them so the deck just comes in some shrink wrap oh it's really got a pretty um uh tree here in the bottom of the box that's just that's really pretty it, it is it is quite a nice sturdy magnetic box and you know me I love nice boxes I like to keep my decks in boxes so when something comes with a nice box it's like great I don't have to do anything else to it um, so it comes with a, a little white book or in this case a little black book <laughs> um, and uh, you know it, it doesn't look like it has a significant amount of information in it but it is all nicely illustrated and it's glossy pages so that's nice um, so it shows here all of the individual panoramas kind of small um, and then going through there's you know again the same information as in the box and here are the 22 paths of the major arcana and you can see here, this is the the little book is is illustrated in a really cool way. You know, there's not a ton of text here. Um, there's really just kind of some 
like a keyword um, for the individual cards. Um, and so it, and it sort of shows like for each one a sort of light keyword and a shadow keyword it looks like maybe is what's going on here. Um, you know, it's, I don't think that this is going to be super useful to anybody who's not um, experienced reading tarot, but I do know that there is a fair amount of pretty traditional symbolism in this deck, so um, I'm not anticipating that I'm going to have too much trouble or really um, use uh, this book very much. Um, one interesting thing about this deck is that there are some specific cards in the deck that were um, offered as rewards in the Kickstarter where the creator, you know, if for a certain reward level in the Kickstarter, the creator would sort of design a card um, for a particular backer that, you know, kind of expressed an archetype that that backer was really interested in and, um, and, the, and that those would be included in the deck. So these are the three champion cards, um, the practitioner, artist, reader, wild, and astrologer. And so I think that's cool, you know, I'm, I'm kind of excited to see what those cards look like in the deck. And then we have um, the Elemental Realms. So again, these are just the suits. And again, it's just fairly limited keywords um, that we have for each of these. You know, there's just, there's not a ton of text um, in this, but there are, there is an interesting, there's an appendix here, appendix of symbols, gratitude and magic. Um, so, <laughs> um, so there's just the astrological signs here, planetary signs, um, runes that it looks like he included, just some sort of, you know, a key, a key to some of the symbols that may have been included in the cards. Um, there's a little of an advertising page here, and then there's a list of all of the folks who backed the deck. And I'm assuming I am in here. And I am. So, um, so yeah. So it's uh, definitely, you know, an interesting, an interesting deck. Um, and again, you know, it's not like the most helpful guidebook in the world, but the production quality of it's very nice. Um, aside from a typo that I noticed, but aside from that, the production quality is very nice. This deck does have gilded, uh, silver, silver uh, gilded edges too, which is, you know, really lovely. Like I said, it seemed like, you know, sort of, every day he was coming back and saying, oh, you know, we're going to be able to add this new thing. We can add gilding. We can um, get the nicer magnetic box. We can do the, um, the, uh, uh, the small deck with every, every package. So he had just a lot of stretch rewards and they were all kind of really nice ones. So I, I was quite impressed by that. Um, so here's what, what we have. We've got, um, it looks like just kind of a title, a title card here. Um, so this is what the backings of the cards look like. They have this sun with, again, all of those various symbols, you know, planetary, astrological, runic, um, around the, the, the edges. So it, it is a nice looking back. Um, and the cardstock is, the cardstock is not bad, you know? I mean, it, I wouldn't say that it's like super thick or anything like that, but it feels like it's probably going to shuffle pretty nicely. And, um, you know, I'm... There's a little bit of glitter coming off on my fingers from the edging. I, I've never gotten a silver edged deck where that didn't kind of happen right off the bat. I don't know what it is about silver edging, but it, the Fountain Tarot did this to me too. It's just every time I used it for a while, I just had the, these very festively glittery hands afterward. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll see, we'll see how it holds up over time. Um, it's definitely very pretty. Um, and so then, yeah, here are um, the individual uh, cards of the deck. I'm actually, I'm going to flip to the back here because I'm, I'm just, I'm curious to know. Um, okay, so here is where all of the backer cards are included. It's at the end of the, um, the end of the majors. They are cool cards. You know, I do feel like they might be usable cards. Um, and I think there's also these um, additional path cards um, as well. There's this card, or elemental cards, so there's this card um, showing the tree. This card looks like earth. Um, this card looks like air. This card looks like fire. It shows a volcano, and this card looks like water. So there's, you know, there's just quite a few, like, extra cards and interesting things that are included in here. 
Um, and then there's a little kind of uh, advertisement card at the end. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and start going through this deck. You know, again, you can see it's really cool artwork, this sort of white on black kind of look. Um, and again, I, you know, I'm still I'm not sure how I'm going to respond to it as a reading deck, whether or not I'm gonna find this easy to read at all, um, because it does feel a bit busy and it, it, it feels like it's not, you know, it feels like it's very rich in detail and symbolism, but like it might be just sort of visually busy for me, but I, I don't know, I'll have to give it a try and see how it goes. But what I'm gonna do now is zoom in. All right, and so starting off here with the Fool, you know, again, I mean, you can see that this is very traditional symbolism in a lot of ways. I mean, we've got the Fool. It looks a lot like the Rider Waite Smith Fool with the flower in his hand, looking like he's stepping off the ledge. It's interesting how there's sort of these um, invisible stairs going off the precipice or invisible platforms where it looks like he, 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 if he actually stepped out off of the precipice, um, he, he would, he wouldn't plummet to his death. You know, he would actually, um, be able to kind of walk on air. Um, and it's sort of that, you know, the, the unexpected success that sometimes comes from naivete, but, um, I'm just going to show really quick here how, you know, this all hooks up. So like you can see how, um, all of the cards, match up the if I put the fool and the magician next to each other um it's a it creates a you know a, a panoramic kind of picture I'm just going to add the high priestess too so this sort of wisp of smoke is kind of snaking across all of the cards and sort of shows a pathway but so um but I am going to go through these uh, one by one so here again here's the fool and the magician again you know this is is pretty um pretty uh traditional symbolism that we've got for the magician you know it's again it's just a different style of artwork but definitely standing in the normal position the sort of as above so below position with the tools um here on his table so um so it's definitely you know it's definitely a magician that um can very much be read in the normal way you know same thing with the high priestess here we've got pomegranates we've got her book we've got the moon you know it's we got the water again it's it is definitely um something that is quite uh, quite traditional symbolism Pil pillars you know the, the whole bit but um but just definitely drawn in a different style that is a very cool style again i don't know how readable it's going to feel but it is very beautiful um, we've got a pregnant empress here. There's these deer and sheep all around and sort of this abundance of wheat growing and the stream flowing through. So again, you know, extremely traditional. We've got the emperor here. There still is some, you know, a trickle of water in the emperor. And um, it's, again, it's, it is traditional symbolism. Ram's horns on the throne, the Aries symbol. Um, there's kind of a volcano in the, a smoking volcano, maybe a dormant, kind of dormant volcano in the background, which I find interesting, but, um, you know, it is that very traditional sort of emperor symbolism. We've got the high priest here instead of the hierophant. And so um, we've got some, you know, planetary symbols on the two pillars here. Um, we've got the symbol of Taurus, who is associated with the hierophant. Um, and, yeah. You know, I think definitely, we, definitely the astrological stuff is, is incorporated. Here's the lovers. It is a very cool card, I think. Um, I like, I like how they're illustrated. I like the fact that they're sort of dancing on water. Um, it is, it is definitely cool. I like it's, it, and it's interesting how they're sort of holding on to each other, but also pulling apart, which kind of gets at that um, sense of choice that's embodied in the lover's card. And the chariot, you know, again, I mean, you can see t how this is really cool imagery. Like, look at these cool sphinxes. I mean, you know, it, it's very traditional. It's just, it's a very cool illustration style. It's just, again, I don't know if just my eyes, if, I'm going to have to see how I read with it and just see how it goes because I don't know um, if it's maybe too busy for my old, pathetic, extremely bad eyesight, bifocal wearing eyes. So, yeah. Strength is gorgeous. Just really, really beautiful. 
oops, the hermit. So yeah, I mean, they're really, they're attractive cards. I, I do kind of like the, how the hermit here is going through an archway. Um, you know, it sort of shows maybe that kind of journey from one realm to another that you might take as the hermit, that sort of maybe, you know, journey from, journey within that you might take as the hermit, um, how maybe that's a, a doorway that you step through. I do like that. Here we've got the wheel. And we've got a Buddha here below the wheel. So I think that's, you know, getting at the concept of, of karma. Um, and we've got sort of an Ouroboros uh, here woven in all of the various planetary and astrological symbols. So definitely a lot going on here. We've got justice here. Again, we've got our astrological symbol kind of built in. It's so pretty. Yeah, I mean, it's just a very pretty card. The Hanged Man. It's interesting how it shows his reflection as free. Um, you know, I think there is actually a, quite a lot of deep thought that's been put into how these things are depicted. And, you know, I think that the creator did a really lovely job. I'm just not sure how my eyes are going to handle it. It's a cool death card, too. So, and here is Temperance. That's I like how there is a centaur in Temperance. It makes me think of um, Chiron. It makes me think of the sort of, um, of how that the association with healing, you know, it definitely kind of extra gets at that healing meaning that you get from temperance. Um, and, and yeah, the temperance figure, uh, herself, his or herself is actually very, um, very traditional looking. The devil. Yeah, it's a cool devil. You know, again, I think it is very, very, um, very traditional in a lot of ways. The tower. Yeah, it's a super cool art style. It's one of those things where, um, beautiful star. It's really lovely. Um, yeah, it's one of those things where I feel like, you know, it's artwork where if it were bigger and like hanging on a wall, I'd have an easier time with it than small and on cards. Um, the moon, again, you know, super traditional. You got your dog, you got your wolf, you got your lobsters, you got your pillars. Um, you got your water sort of forming a pathway. I mean, it's very, very, very traditional. The sun, we've got our baby on a horse. We've got our harp suggesting Apollo. Um, you know, definitely a lot of very, we've got sunflowers. There's definitely a lot of very traditional symbolism in here. Um, judgment. So this is very interesting. It's a person making a face. Um, there's a phoenix. Um, you know, the, the person is sort of hollowed out on the inside, um, sort of, you know, kind of indicating that, uh, you know, the, the process of judgment is sort of a, a, a process of completely looking within yourself, you know? Um, so it, it's really, it's very interesting uh, symbolism. It's very interesting how we've got the phoenix here, and it's very interesting how we've got this kind of face, sort of all-seeing face, um, kind of made up of all of the imagery in the card. It's a cool card. I'm liking all, so many things about this deck. I'm just worried about my ability to see it well enough. It's That's literally all it is. Aside from that, I'm really kind of loving it. Um, we've got the world here, uh, all of the different astrological symbols around here, um, and the woman just sort of holding the world. Um, and so here we get to those, um, the backer cards. Uh, so we've got here the practitioner. So um, it looks, you know, like somebody who is a is a practitioner of, of magic or various different sort of mystical arts. We've got all kinds of different um, tools that are being held in his hand from scientific tools to magical tools. Um, so that's, I mean, that is a really, a really cool image. 
got the artist here. The reader. That's cool. I do like that. It shows a big tattoo on her back and it shows a cat and yeah, I like that a lot. We've got wild. So this one's showing a whole bunch of cats. Seems like these people who got these backer cards are people that are interested in all the same things I'm interested in. And here we have the astrologer. And this is very cool. You know, we've charts, sundials, and then all of the planets floating around and this person's sort of ability to, to see all of it. And so here we have this sort of unity, I think, of all of the elemental realms. It's sort of a world tree card almost. And then here we have earth and air. And fire, that's cool with the volcano, and then water. Yeah, I mean, it's it's gorgeous art, gorgeous imagery, um, really cool. Again, I just, I'm going to have to see how well I can read with this. Um, so here's Ace of Pentacles, the Two of Pentacles. Um, definitely more of the sort of clown or jester feel of the two of pentacles. Um, but I do like that it has the ship in the background. I always like the ship in the two of pentacles. Here we have the three of pentacles. Again, you know, it's people people working. Um, people with hammers, people with chisels, people um, all working as a team to create something. The four, you know, definitely here we've got this person kind of just peeking inside a treasure chest who's unwilling to even open it all the way, you know, so a little bit of that kind of miserly feel of the of the four, but you don't necessarily have to read it that way. I like that there's kind of a castle tower off in the distance because, again, it sort of gives that feeling of kind of protecting your own home and space and, um, and protecting what's yours. And the five... So, yeah, that's, again, somebody very much trapped out in the cold, but there is a way, it looks like, to get to something better. Um, and it's just a question of taking those steps up that way. It doesn't look easy, but it looks like it's something they can do. Here's the six. So this is interesting. There's a lot going on in this card. There's, first of all, a person who appears to be helping another person out of the water. And then there's these two people who appear to be helping each other. Um, and then there's this person who looks like they're transporting goods of some kind. So again, I guess it sort of, it, it gets at all of that suggestion of the Six of Pentacles of like different forms of largesse, you know, or different forms of distributing resources. There's just, I don't, this is a cool deck actually. There's a lot going on in it. I think it's really neat. Um, I. I, maybe I need better glasses to read with this, but I kind of, I really kind of want to try really hard because I, I do like the imagery an awful lot. Um, here's the Seven of Pentacles. You know, again, we've got um, stuff's been planted, and the farmer here. This looks like more like he's just, he's just waiting to see what will happen next. The Eight of Pentacles. And uh, you know, I like this depicting an artist, you know, again, that sense of working very hard at something, you know, developing your skills, mastery of a skill, um, you know, learning to perfect your skills in the eight. That's very cool. Beautiful nine. Really lovely. I, I, I really like this deck a lot. Um, and the 10, you know, very strong sense of family, home, legacy, lineage, all those things that you get. So here as the Page of Pentacles, we've got another um, artist. Oh, and this is cool. The way that the the uh, courts are indicated is by um, a waxing moon. So it goes, it goes from, you know, just a very new moon for the page. Um, 
and then the knight is a little bit fuller, the queen is a little bit fuller, and the king is completely full. So that's, it, it's an interesting way of indicating maturity. You know, I don't necessarily always agree that the king is somehow more mature than the queen. Um, that's not always how I read it. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, um, it's definitely an interesting, interesting way of depicting it. So we've got an artist here as the page. The Knight of Pentacles, you know. It's fully armored, pretty chill looking. The queen is beautiful. And with her deer. And the king. You know, this, the King of Pentacles in this deck does feel a little bit too much like the Emperor. You know, I always expect there to be a little bit more kind of lushness around the King of Pentacles to sort of indicate his his success in material circumstances, but, um, but it is still a cool image. So here we have the Ace of Swords. And it's sort of penetrating just partway through this rocky archway. And the two... This is cool. It looks like there is actually a map and a compass down here, so definitely getting at that sort of decision-making sense of the Two of Pentacles. The Three. This is interesting. So it, it's the heart is in a tree, and then the swords are stuck into it. That's a, that's a really cool depiction of it. I, I do actually. I, I love a lot of the choices that this artist has made in illustrating this deck. Um, the Four of Swords, this gentleman definitely looks like he's he's resting. He looks very weary. The Five, you know, very traditional Five here. The Six, again, a traditional Six, and they're sort of moving away from some rapids and turbulence here toward a, toward a a greener shore that looks like it has more light coming down on it. It's really pretty. The seven, again, I mean, super traditional seven. I think we have, you know, we have birds in basically every swords card. Maybe not every one, but a lot of them do have birds in them. And here's the eight of swords. So again, you can see that she has lots of stepping stones out of her situation that she's choosing not to take. And the nine, you know, again, this is really interesting. This There's the skull kind of made out of clouds, so it definitely gets at that, and there's a reflection showing here, so it, it definitely gets at that sort of sense of illusion. Um, it looks like these swords are actually reflected as well, so there aren't actually as many swords um, as she thinks that there are. And then, um, and then you know, this sort of scary skull here is just is just made of vapor. So, um, so it's definitely something illusionary that she's frightened of. And then this guy again has just like so many swords stuck in him. So he did. <laughs> and so here again we have the page of swords. Lovely birds all around. King of Swords, just hell bent for leather. The Queen, beautiful, with the butterflies and the birds, and she does have water around her. You know her; she isn't touching any of the water, but she does have it around her. So there is a little bit too more emotion to her rationality. And then um, the King of Swords. And again, there is a little bit of water, a little bit of water. His is still water, whereas hers is flowing water. And um, this tree behind him and all these beautiful butterflies, his eyes are closed, like he's kind of thinking very deeply. So here we have the wands. And this is a very cool ace of wands. Um, it shows a sort of altar uh, within what looks like maybe an offering, an offering bowl or a brazier, um, that is a cool Ace of Wands. Never seen anything quite like that. And a cool Two of Wands too. He's kind of using the, using a wand to sort of pull vault up to see farther, you know. And again, he's got his little sextant here and his globe, looking off, um, navigating through the future. The three. 
three of wands here, you know, there's a cloak, so it looks like maybe this is a person who's about to travel. Um, there's a ship that looks like it's approaching, so again, it's there is that sort of traditional feel to it. Lovely four. That's, yeah, I, re I really like the imagery choices and how there's some extra. Another thing I'm noticing is how there's a lantern. There's, it looks like in most of these, I'm trying to find it in this one, but in these other wands cards, there is a lantern somewhere in the illustration sort of depicting, you know, light and fire. Here's, there's lanterns hanging here. There's one on the ground. Here there's a lantern down in the corner. Here we got the six of wands. And this is this is cool how the banner here depicts uh, the fire elemental symbol and lions. I mean, you know, they're, they're a really a lot of c really cool thought I think went into this deck. And we've got the seven of wands. I just talked a lot about the seven of wands recently, so I'm gonna just go ahead and move on past that. The eight of wands. I like how. There's a fire burning here that's sort of sending all of this information shooting off into the sky. There's a rabbit, you know, some birds, fast moving animals. Um, the nine seems to depict a child who's been injured maybe and is using the, the wand almost as a crutch. And the 10. And again, I, you know, this is a nice 10. I mean, there's definitely something that's trying to be accomplished here. There's a destination. Um, and, you know, there's not a feeling that the person can't handle it. And so here we have the Page of Wands, off exploring. The Knight of Wands, again, just super ready to go. Pyramids in the background. There's kind of cool, um, like, lizard down here very aggressive looking lizard. <laughs> very, very <laughs> knight of wands. Beautiful queen of wands here. I like the cat has the fire symbol. The queen does too. You know, we've got the sunflowers and again, the sands in the background. It's very, very traditional, but very beautiful. And same with the king of wands here. We've got this sort of roaring lion. This is a rare deck where I would almost, like, I think that this artwork is incredible. And I think from an aesthetic standpoint, um, if you're not talking about reading this deck, it's, it's, it's really, really cool. But it's a deck where from a reading standpoint, I almost wish it were in color because I feel like I could see things better. Um, so here we have the Ace of Cups. Two of Cups. You know how I always like the Caduceus and the Two of Cups. Lovely three. Again, very traditional. We've even got some little pumpkins and stuff down here. Four. And this is an interesting one. The fourth cup is sort of in the bark of the tree. So it, it, it it's appearing, but it's not sort of a being offered to him from a hand in a cloud, which is always kind of nice. And the five of cups. And a six. The seven, this is very interesting. You know, this is very interesting. This is quite different from the traditional symbolism where this person is almost kind of drowning in all of the different visions that they see. Um, and and that, that, is, that is kind of a cool take on it. You know, um, they're sort of being overwhelmed by possibilities or, um, you know, allowing their brain to be overtaken by dreams. Um, I think that's a, I think that's a really interesting take on it that still allows you to have, um, to, to go at it in a lot of different ways. You know, it still allows a multitude of different interpretations. Eight of Cups. I really like a nine 
That's so pretty. That's my, my idea of the Nine of Cups. You know, sitting in a beautiful place with a glass of wine, watching the sun go down. That's about exactly right for me. And the Ten. Lovely. So here's the Page of Cups. Very nice. He has the fish on his kind of tunic there. I wish the fish was popping out of the cup because I gotta be perfectly honest with you, the fish popping out of the cup is my favorite piece of symbolism in the entirety of the tarot. I love it so much. Um, I'm, I've contemplated getting a tattoo of it many times, um, but uh, you know, but this is still a very cool Page of Cups image. And here's the Knight of Cups. I really like how he's sort of holding these streamers um, th that are that are like those fish wind socks. Um, that's that's a really cool idea of it. Um, it's yeah, I like that. And here we have the lovely queen on her beautiful shell throne, sitting fully in the water. Um, very beautiful. And here's the king. Awesome. There's a ship kind of peeking out back there. I, I love it. Um, so, yeah, this deck, I'm, I'm in a little bit of a quandary about it because I freaking love the choices that were made in um, illustrating the cards in terms of the symbolism. Um, I love that it is very Rider Waite Smith, but it does have a few interesting diversions that it goes after. Um, I just, I genuinely really, really, uh, really like those choices. The problem is, I'm not sure. I feel like I have to hold the cards like right up to my face to really see everything in them. And that's partially because I have horrendous eyesight, you guys. I have like the worst eyesight in the world. If I take off my glasses and I hold up my hand five inches from my face, my hand is blurry. Like I am so blind. I wear strong, strong bifocals. Um, so, you know, partially this is just my fault, I think, um, that I'm going to have a hard time seeing this deck, I feel like. Um, but I, so I'm just, I'm just in a real quandary as to how I'm gonna go about working with it um, because I love it and I wanna keep it and I wanna read with it and I, I, I love the choices that were made in illustrating it but I just, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make it work for me. Like if I lay some cards out, you know, I'm just gonna randomly choose a few and like lay them out. I feel like I have to, you know, like look at it really closely to to glean stuff from it. So I just, I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm debating whether or not I'm going to, but I'm not letting this go right away because I, I like it too much to do that. And, um, I, I don't know. We'll have to see if I work with it a little bit, if I can make it work. So the other thing that I want to take a look at here is the little mini deck that goes along with it. Look how cute this is. So this is the Wanderlight Tarot. So this is just like a travel version of the big deck. Um, it's very cute in size. Okay. Okay, so here is the little deck. Um, look how cute it is. It's so tiny. So this is just a cute little travel deck. Again, it's got basically the same backs on it. Um, and then, oh, it's just, it's like palm sized. And here are, there are some planetary cards included here. I think this is the creator's, um, uh, his, what am I trying to say? His logo. Um, but there's some planetary cards. Um, and then it goes into the actual um, meat of the deck itself. And again, I mean, these are all taken from the, um, the normal illustrations of the rest of the cards, but they're just quite a bit simplified, which actually... This, even though it's so much smaller, I have an easier time seeing. I feel like I could read with this, no problem. Um, <laughs> but it's just, it, I mean, it's it's really cool that he included this mini deck with every reward level. I think I got the early word, bird reward for this deck, which I want to say 
was only like $35. And what I ended up getting for that here is a mini deck with a bunch of extra cards, um, a big beautiful deck with gilded edges that comes in a lovely magnetic box, and, um, and a pouch, which I don't know if the big deck's gonna fit in the pouch. I don't think it does. I think the pouch is for the mini deck because um, this comes in just a tuck box. So you probably wanna keep this in a pouch. But, um, but yeah, I mean, oh, and again, it has some additional at the end here, um, an extra Tree of Life card. It has the additional sort of elemental cards. And then, yeah, so honestly, you guys, I think this is a really, really cool deck. Um, that comes with so much cool stuff. My only concern is if I'm going to be able to read it. Um, but I think it's beautiful and just and really cool. Um, so anyway, so yeah, so this again, this is the Shadow Light Tarot by Waking Canvas and then the Wander Light Tarot, which is the little mini version of the deck. And, you know, so much went into this. I think it, I think it's really marvelously produced. I think that the images of it are fantastic. Um, and you know, I, I, I really, really like it a lot. I'm, and I'm just, I'm just going to have to experiment with working with it to see how it goes for me. Um, just, just from a, from a visual standpoint and a, my eyes suck standpoint. Um, so anyway, thanks so much for watching everybody. Um, this is such a, this is a really, really cool deck. Um, and uh, you know, my initial reactions to it are that I very, very much like it, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to see it. <laughs> so anyway, we'll just have to see. I'll let you know how I get on with it. Um, thanks so much, everybody. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.